Trust me when I say that one of the best ESL companies out there would be Native Camp. You know, teacher Karen had to turn down two great paying companies, Novakid and Skyang for Native Camp. That's how much I am madly in love with this company. You know, the stress levels are really low. The pay is high. The workload is not too much. The penalties are reasonable and it really gives true flexibility. <laughs> so if you would like to apply a Native Camp, don't forget to click the link on the description box and it would be a great help teacher if you put my email address as the referrer's email um, on your actual application. It's askteacherkaren at gmail.com. It's not teacher Karen, it's askteacherkaren at gmail.com. That would be like so appreciated. Now, thing is, <laughs> the demo class in Native Camp is quite challenging because it's like pass or fail. And it's challenging to pass because if you miss anything, you fail. So on this video, I will be sharing with you proven tips on how to pass your Native Camp demo class all in one take. So if you're interested, please continue watching. My first tip is make sure that you and your environment are prepared. What do I mean by you preparing? Of course, you have to dress decently and look professional for the ladies put on light makeup. Make sure you have good lighting. I'm using a 36 centi centimeter ring light and make sure that you also have like a noise canceling headset. You know what teaches? I failed my first native camp demo class because my dog decided to bark and it was so loud. It distracted me. It distracted my, my interviewer and it totally derailed me. So you have to make sure that your environment is like cooperating with the situation situation no dogs no vehicles no unnecessary noise it has to be like a quiet environment you have to talk to your family members and tell them that hey today is a day that you have to shut up because i might fail my demo class so um once again you have to make sure that you prepare everything and that you are free from distractions and thing is when it comes to the native camp demo class you don't know how long you have to wait um my suggestion is be on cue from Tuesday to Saturday, whenever you're free, be on cue at 10 in the morning, 10 a.m. Manila time or Philippines time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Philippines time. Uh, whatever the time is on your, on your browser, sometimes it's not reliable because for me, it showed like 12 a.m. to 5 a.m. and I was like, huh? Or it showed 10, one time 10 p.m. to like 2 a.m. and I was like, seriously. Then when I went at, at 10 p.m., no one was there. So again, it's 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., Tuesdays to Saturdays, and be on cue by 10 a.m. as early as you can so that you're going to be first in line. Because in my case, on my first take, I had to wait for about an hour. On my retake, because I wanted to take it on the same day, I waited on cue around... Four in the afternoon, I got my demo around 5.50, 5.50 in the afternoon. So it was like uh, almost two hours of waiting. So that's my tip. Let me just pull it up. Okay. Hello, welcome to Native Camp. Tip number two, know how to confidently navigate the tools on the Native Camp website. So the thing with your demo class is you will not have a trainer. You know, in other companies, just like let's say in my previous company, Akatsok, we had to spend about four hours with an actual trainer for us to, you know, prepare for the demo class. But in Native Camp, this is a company that encourages self-reliance and independence. So after you've finished your system check, your your English assessment, you'll be redirected to a learning kit. A learning kit, which is basically a self-study kit that you would have to, from the name itself, study by yourself. Now, um, I spent about four hours studying everything so that I'd be able to know everything by heart. And because right after passing the system check, you'd be able to have access to the Native Camp website. Um, I navigated the website and make sure that I can confidently navigate it, that I know how to pull up the textbook, uh, I know what to click, I know where the chat box is, and so on. Because, you know, if you are not familiar with the tool, then that's going to be an additional stressor for you once you take your, your demo class. So once again, you really have to study and master everything on your own. You have to religiously watch the training videos. You have to imitate what they're doing because on the demo class, this is not the time for you to be like a free spirit and be like totally spontaneous. The demo class is scripted. You have to follow certain steps 
which are all on the learning kit. You have to follow the script. You can, you know, paraphrase it or give ad libs. That's okay. But the main idea should still be there. Practice is key. Familiarize yourself with the tools and the learning kit. Can you see me well? Could you see me? Okay. Can you hear me too? All right. That's perfect. Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Teacher Karen. I'm Karen. What about you? What's your name? Oh, let me spell that. Is it E L Z I E? L Z? Okay. Nice to meet you, L Z. <laughs> well, I want to check my speaking pace. Is it too fast, too slow, or just okay? Perfect. Well, uh, let me verify our lesson. Um, it's demo lesson beginner, grammar beginner four. Is that right? Okay. So are you ready to get started, Elsie? Let's go. Tip number three, use a class flow template. This class flow template will be your guide on what to say. It's also going to be your guide on the things that you should be taking note of. So I'm going to be putting my class flow template on the description box. Feel free to use it. And as you can see, the components would be the following. Let's say, hello, welcome to Native Camp, because you might say another company. <laughs> and it's mandatory that you ask these two questions. Can you see me? And can you hear me? After doing the system check or the technical check, you would have to introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Karen. What about you? What's your name? This, the, so get the name and so on. Afterwards, you must, 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 must <laughs> check with them if your speaking pace is okay by asking, is my speaking pace okay or am I speaking too fast? If you don't ask that, trust me, you will fail. <laughs> okay, you have to ask about your speaking pace. After you do that one, the next step would be to verify the lesson number. Not the lesson topic, but the lesson number. Okay, you really have to say lesson number, blah, blah, blah. And just to verify, our book for today is lesson number four. Is that correct? You have to verify the book. All right, and once you've done this, all of these things, you can now go ahead and proceed with the class. So basically, this is the class opening and the class flow template would guide you on what to do on the class opening so that you will not mess up. Okay, because the class opening, trust me, is the most stressful part. You know why? Because this is the time when your BP adjusts to the situation, your your heart rate, your respiratory rate, it, it adjusts to the situation because, you know, you've been waiting for like two hours and all of a sudden you're going to hear ding dong. Okay, demo class mode. So it's like a mini heart attack and you would have to like calm yourself down so that you're not going to be distracted. And notice that my voice on the first few seconds would be quite breathy or airy because I'm having difficulty breathing. I got so startled that I know that my heart rate was up, my respiratory rate was up as well, and I had a hard time breathing. So you have to keep your cool and pull yourself together, teacher. So today's lesson is lesson four, and the title is Why Do You Need Nato? Please repeat after me. Very good. Why do you need NATO? And Elsie, um, please check today's goal. Oh, that was quick. Okay. And then let's move on to today's phrases. Uh, please repeat after me twice. Thank you. Uh, the first one is, why do you need NATO for barbecue? Why do you need NATO for the barbecue? Very good. Uh, the next one is, because we cook it with meat and vegetables. One more time. Because we cook it with meat and vegetables. Very good. Now let's move on to the new words or expressions. Uh, before we proceed, do you have any questions, LD? Okay. Um, please do check the directions. Okay. Now, for this part, please repeat after me twice as well. Uh, the first word is because. One more time. Because. Perfect. Good pronunciation. Now, let's go to the sample sentence. Because we cook it with meat and vegetables. Because we cook it with meat and vegetables. 
that was good. Next up, we have an American expression. It's no way. Very good. Let's say it again. No way. It's like saying no. <laughs> Tip number four, know your material by heart. Now, when it comes to the teaching material, it's quite straightforward. But the thing is, even though it's quite straightforward, when you're in the middle of your demo lesson and your stress levels are like spiking through the roof, sometimes you might get distracted and you might forget to do certain things. Now, um, what to remember is that the red font would be your actual script. These are the things that you must say. The blue font would be notes for you, teacher, so that when the student asks you a question about whatever the, the topic is, you'd be able to answer it. You do not read aloud blue font, just the red ones, right? Now, it's critical that you know how to follow instructions. You, let's say, when you mention, please repeat after me twice, you have to say the phrase first, have the student say it. You say it again and have the student repeat for the second time. You don't do, let's say, uh, how are you? You don't say, how are you? And have the student say, how are you twice? You have to say, how are you? Then the student says, how are you? And you say it again, how are you? Then the student says, how are you? That's how you say it twice. You have to say it first, then the student says it next. And you have to do that twice, okay? Now, um, as you go through this material, it's not enough that you just know how to, you know, deliver the lines or the script. You have to know the content by heart. Be prepared because your interviewer or that QA, whoever this woman is, she will or he will ask you questions about the material. Um, you have to know how to answer effectively. You have to know how to explain certain words. So in the background, I also have like the Cambridge Dictionary. I also have like the Google br uh, browser on standby so that if there are things that I have to to search while in class, I'd be able to do that. But to avoid that, why not study the material itself and know it by heart? So that whatever question the student throws at you, you'd be able to answer it really, really well. And speaking of knowing the material by heart, you have to know the parts of the lesson. Why? Because the student will or the student or the QA will actually like jump to the next part. You won't expect to do this demo class for 25 minutes. This demo class is only like eight minutes because the student requested to move right away to a different segment. So you have to know where to find it so that you will not panic. So let's say it twice one more time. No way. Uh, one more time, please. No way. Oh, sure. Um, well, it's like asking, uh, when I ask you, would you like to go to McDonald's to have a burger? Then you could say, so this is an example of a question. Would you like to eat, would you like to eat at McDonald's? And let's say you, you hate hamburgers. You don't like hamburgers at all. So you could say, no way. It means you really don't like eating there. No way. <laughs> okay, uh, just give me a moment. Uh, so far, do you have any other questions? Okay, so let's move on to short conversation. Uh, give me a moment. Tip number five, use the chat box. In this company, the chat box is life. You're going to notice that you're going to be typing a lot. You're going to be writing a lot in class instead of just like listening and giving feedback. Because in my previous company, we didn't use a chat box that much, only reasonably. But in Native Camp, you have to use it all throughout the class. What are the things that you have to put on the chat box? Number one, your name, the student's name. And you also have to like uh, also put in there, um, let's say, whatever explanation you give the student, let's say, um, in this scenario, I type my question, would you like to eat at McDonald's? And then the answer is no way. I also type that on the chat box. You would have to type all corrections on the chat box. And for the questions, questions, let's say for the comprehension part and so on, you have to put all the questions on the chat box. Let's say the comprehension question would be, um, why do they have to add natto to barbecue? You have to literally copy that question and paste it on the chat box. Never, ever, ever forget to copy and paste whatever the question is on the chat box. So once again, utilize that damn chat box as much as you can for questions, for corrections. You have to put it on the chat box. All errors, all corrections. Chat box is live, teacher. Don't forget that. Please check the directions, Elsie. Perfect. 
And let's read the conversation together. And I need you to repeat after me. So I'll read the situation first. Charlotte and James are shopping for the barbecue party tonight. Oh, okay. All right, now let's head on to the questions. Once again, please check the directions, LZ. Okay, now please answer my questions. Uh, let me put the question on the chat box. The first question is, does Charlotte like natto? So you said, no, she does like natto. So I'd like to share something with you, LZ, that this one is actually incorrect because when um, you say no, you have to also, it means she doesn't like natto, doesn't, as in does not. It means you don't like it. So you must say she doesn't like natto. Let me show you the correct form, okay? So this is the correct form. No, she doesn't like natto. Could you say that for me, please? Very good, because no agrees with does not, okay? All right, now uh, let's head on to question. Oh, let's try it again. One more time, does Charlotte like natto? What's the answer? Perfect. Now let's head on to question number two. For question number two, why does James need natto? Oh, pardon? Oh, okay. And my final tip is you have to listen carefully. You know, the QAs or the interviewers really has this way of messing up with your ears. Like, on my first demo, uh, one feedback that I got is that uh, I, I let pronunciation slips, you know, just simply pass. I did not correct them in terms of pronunciation. So teachers have the mindset that your QA will really mess up their pronunciation and grammar. So you have to listen carefully. If they have mispronounced any words, put it on your class flow, on your notes template, and then give feedback as soon as they're done speaking. Whenever you're giving corrections, you have to, you know, have them uh, say it twice. Uh, let's say uh, they mispronounce the word uh, barbecue, right? You have to say it and have them repeat it twice, barbecue, 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 barbecue. So for corrections, they have to repeat them twice. Now, uh, for the review portion, when you're reviewing the student, let's say your, 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 your QA, you know, reaches the point when she or he is asking you to do the, the review, whenever you're correcting the pronunciation, they have to repeat it three times, not twice, three times only for the review portion. Let's say barbecue, barbecue, barbecue. You say barbecue, student says barbecue, barbecue, then student says barbecue. And again, for the third time, teacher says barbecue, then a the student says barbecue. Yes, you sound like a broken record, but that's like the approach in native camp. You have to point out three mispronounced words for the review and three new words or vocabulary that they've learned on the lesson and one grammar error. Again, it's already on the class flow on the description box. Make sure you check it out. Oh, so, teachers, this is the end of our tutorial video on how to pass the demo class. This is my actual demo class and I passed it with flying colors. I didn't get negative feedback from, from the QA on this retake, no negative feedback. So I'm guessing I did it perfectly and I want you to pass your demo. So make sure you watch this video, you know, learn from my mistakes watch the tutorial videos on the native camp uh, learning kit so that you'd be able to master everything on my upcoming video upload I will be sharing with you the actual material I got it from like scribbled if I'm not mistaken the actual material for the native camp demo class we're gonna do a walkthrough on how to properly do it but for this video well we'll focus on you know tips on how to make you pass so if you like this content don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel teacher karen and uh, comment below if you have any questions or clarifications and don't forget to be a blessing to the people around you i'll see you next time goodbye